I'm Ashley, 28 years old. I got married to a colleague who had been working at the same company before me, about two years ago. My husband Noah, who is two years older, was the one who made the first confession of love. We couldn't have children for a while after getting married, but thinking it was about time given our ages, we started trying to conceive and successfully became pregnant. We're expecting the baby by the end of this year. Now that my morning sickness has settled, I've entered the stable mid-pregnancy stage, so I'm starting to think about various preparations for childbirth. I lost my parents early, so I am deeply grateful to his parents, George and Madeline. They are also eagerly looking forward to the birth of their first grandchild. They live quite in the countryside, so we don't get to meet often, but they always say, you have to take good care of yourself. Make sure you eat well to give birth to a healthy baby and send us nutritious foods and fresh vegetables and fruits they grow themselves. Thanks to them, I've recently gained a bit of weight, probably because I've been enjoying too many fresh veggies and fruits now that I'm in the stable period. I have older sister. Her name is Patricia, 32 years old. She's already married and has a cute daughter. My three-year-old niece, Emily. Noah's big brother, Harry, who is the same age with Patricia, adores her and is already declaring, I'm not letting her marry off, and anyone who asks for her hand in marriage, I'll knock him out. Patricia just laughs it off, saying, Silly, isn't he? Well, it's a lively but good family. Now that I'm pregnant, my sister has become a great mentor, offering me advice. Ask me anything you don't know, okay? Since she's experienced, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from her. She also has some baby items she no longer uses, which could help with our expenses. When I go to the gynecologist, my sister Patricia accompanies me. Our doctor, Victoria, is a seasoned female physician. She is kind and trustworthy. Once, we even had Noah join in for a lecture. First of all, the pregnant woman is the center of everything. Her needs come first. Oh yeah, is that so? Noah looked nervous. Of course, I'm not saying the husband should do all the housework. Pregnant women need some exercise too. However, you shouldn't let her carry heavy items or reach for things on high shelves. Let her exercise moderately, but don't overdo it. That's the basic rule. I see. Noah nodded to the doctor's explanation. Don't worry. I can handle cooking and shopping. So, it would help if you could assist with cleaning and laundry. I straightforwardly ask Noah for help. Well, that's not much different from now. Leave the heavy shopping to me. He responds with a smile. It makes me genuinely happy that Noah is so proactive in saying such things. I quit my job after getting married, and now I work part-time at a local supermarket cashiering and stocking shelves for about three to four hours, three days a week, which is easy on my body. Many co-workers who have given birth before are considerate and offer advice. Recently, Noah's job has become busier. Since we worked at the same company, I am familiar with what he does. It's a clerical work, so except for the fiscal year end. There shouldn't be much over time. I've been busy because I started a new department. I was put in charge along with some younger colleagues, and they made me the leader. But I'm worried about him overdoing it. I have to try hard because I'm going to be a dad. Just don't overdo it. Yeah, I'm taking breaks appropriately, so I'm okay. He reassured me. Then, one day, 
I got a call from my cousin. Hey Ashley, I need some advice. His name is Thomas. He is two years younger than me and just got married last year. His wife is Alice. They were classmates and have been dating since high school. He recently found out she's pregnant and often consults me, since I have a bit more experience. So, what do you want to know? Well, Alice's morning sickness is really bad, and it's hard to watch because she's suffering. She can't eat anything because she can't stand the smell of bread. What should I do? Silly, isn't it? If she can't eat bread, let her eat cake, right? That's like saying let them eat cake by Marie Antoinette. Or a cake logic. Anyway, seriously, tell me. How were you at that time? I just gave up on things that smell bad and ate what I wanted to eat. Also, I made sure to drink plenty of fluids. Oh yeah, having mint-flavored chewing gum or candy helped me feel better. Okay, got it. Thanks, Ashley. If anything else comes up, I'll call you. If my older sister Patricia is mentoring me about childbirth, then my cousin Thomas is my protege. Our houses are close, and since he runs his own business, it's easy for him to find time, so we had many opportunities to meet even before he was married. On the other hand, my husband Noah started working more weekends, saying it was due to his job. He wanted to sort through the documents he collected during the week all at once on his days off. Lately, we've been spending less time together, and I've felt Noah's attitude changing. One night, upset about his frequent holiday work, I complained. Can't you do something about work? You said you'd support me with the housework, but I'm doing it all. My belly has grown so much that even cutting my nails has become a challenge. This is an important time for my job. Couldn't you support me a bit? Instead of just ignoring my requests, he started demanding support from me. I understand, but it's hard for me too. My belly is already this big. I'm trying hard for our child too. Don't just push your own agenda on me. And? And what? I heard you've been meeting a man outside recently. What? A man? Oh, that's just my cousin Thomas. He helps me with shopping when you're not around. Cousin, really? It seems like you've been meeting him several times for a while now. He's family, so of course we meet. Well, just bear with it a little longer. We remained somewhat strained as the due date approached. Then the labor pains started, and I headed to the hospital. Patricia accompanied me to the hospital. The birth canal is already open, so let's go straight to preparations for delivery. After you give birth, you'll be admitted for postnatal care. Patricia contacted Noah but he said he was too busy with work to attend the birth or help with the hospital preparations. So, Patricia took care of all the hospital preparations. Five hours after arriving at the hospital, I successfully gave birth to a baby boy. Despite the excruciating pain, the midwife said it was a very smooth delivery and seeing my baby's cute face even made me think it was a good experience. That night, Noah came to the hospital. Give Ashley some praise for her hard work. You should hold him too. The doctor Victoria spoke to Noah with a smile. I was exhausted in bed, but I imagined Noah's happy face. However, Noah didn't smile and remained silent even as he looked at the baby. Then, Noah muttered something. Is this really my child? What? What are you saying? Is that your first question? I was dumbfounded. He'll grow on her. 
trying to compose myself, I followed up with what Victoria had said. This is our child. Let's work hard to raise him. Even so, Noah was expressionless. Then, suddenly, he said, Doctor, I have request. Please do a DNA test on the baby. What? I was speechless at Noah's words. For a moment, I didn't understand what was happening. Considering a DNA testing, does he really doubt he's the father? That's ridiculous. Victoria was also taken aback. Well, we can do that, but that's not something you should say on the day of the birth. She tried to dismiss him, but... Please, by all means. Noah was adamant and requested the test. Do you doubt me? That's terrible. Really terrible. Postpartum pain forgotten. I shouted loudly. I just want to know the truth. If it confirms the child is really mine, that's all that matters. I'll be relieved. Or is there some reason you're worried about the test? Is he suggesting I have something to hide? Really terrible. I'm not asking for gratitude, but demanding a DNA test all of a sudden is the worst. Sensing the futile argument brewing, Victoria intervened. Let's do the test. She agreed, albeit reluctantly. I was unhappy, but since I knew the child was definitely mine and Noah's, I decided to accept the challenge if he insisted that far. When Noah left the room, I broke down in tears. I had thought Noah would be happy. Instead, the fact that he doubted me enough to demand a DNA test. Later, as Noah had requested, we did the DNA test and decided to discuss the results when Noah visited the hospital the following weekend. On the day of the report, Noah appeared unusually calm. In the hospital room, Victoria pulled out the report. I'll just tell you the conclusion. Okay. The result of the test shows that the likelihood that Noah is the father of the boy is. Victoria paused to take a breath, then announced. Zero percent. This child is not Noah's biological son. What? I was speechless and nearly fainted. That can't be. I can't think of any reason why. Yet, how could this be? My mind went blank. Noah smirked and said, I knew it. Then he said triumphantly, You're trying to pin a child from an affair on me, aren't you? And then he pointed at me. I want a divorce. You're entirely to blame. I'm going to demand a hefty alimony, so be prepared. With those parting words, he left the hospital room. I was left utterly dumbfounded. I consulted with Patricia and Thomas. Patricia listened to my story quietly and then became indignant. Being falsely accused like this, it's no joke. We need to give him a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, I've got it all covered, so you can rest easy, Ashley. Thomas said, smirking confidently. This isn't a comforting conversation. Patricia was angry. Um, yeah, right. Thomas chuckled, seemingly amused. I couldn't tell if they were serious or just enjoying my misfortune. Later, I got a call from Noah. I've decided to go through with the divorce. My parents agree too. I'm the victim here, so I'll be seeking alimony. Maybe around $30,000. I'm thinking of leaving it to a lawyer. Is that okay? I informed him. Fine, but you're paying for the childbirth expenses yourself. I'm not spending a dime on someone else's kid. 
Have it your way. Yeah, I will do as I please. I'm a stranger now. If you can't pay the alimony, I'll take the house and land. As the victim, I have that right. Noah was adamantly aggressive. That house and land are inheritance for my deceased parents. I don't care. Anyway, I'm busy preparing for the divorce. I'll contact you again. I reported Noah's call to Patricia and then we proceeded with our next plan. I was soon to be discharged from the hospital, and my cousin Thomas came to pick me up in his car. Good job. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling much better, but I have to keep going for this little one's sake. I gazed down at the small life wrapped in a baby blanket. Right, I've got it all covered. Let's give that no of yours double, no, triple payback. We talked about this as we arrived home. My house, which I hadn't seen in a while, looked completely different. Noah had moved all his belongings out. The empty room only had the baby items I had prepared left behind. And there was a note from my husband. The note read, I'm leaving the house. I won't come back. I'm not returning to my parents' house either, so don't bother looking for me. Only contact me if necessary. If he wasn't going back to his parents' house, I knew where he was headed. Really, he's quick with things like this. I sighed in exasperation. Shortly after, I received a call from Noah. Perfect timing. As soon as I answered, Noah yelled out. What do you think you're doing? Sending that stuff to my office. Oh, about that. Well, since you wouldn't tell me where you are, I had to send it to your office, right? I responded nonchalantly. How could you? My boss demanded an explanation, and I had to tell him about our divorce. Thanks to you, the whole office knows, and now everyone is looking at me strangely. It seemed my plan had indeed caused a stir around Noah. It's none of my concern. You saw the contents, right? Make sure you come to the liar's office. Don't try to run away. Who's running away? You'd better be prepared to. I'm ready to fight this through. Apparently, the notice of content arranged by the lawyer had reached his company. I can just imagine Noah panicking. Yes, Noah's encirclement is nearly complete. And then, we had a discussion about the divorce at the liar's office. Noah's parents were also present. I was accompanied by my sister Patricia and her husband. Her husband is Harry. Harry, who works in construction, treats me like his own sister. And then the discussion began. Ashley cheated and had a child, then tried to pass it off as mine and raise it on my money. This is highly malicious, so I demand not only alimony but also compensation for the house and land in Ashley's name. This was Noah's main reason and condition for the divorce. Oh wow, he's quite bold. I was fully prepared and at ease. The lawyer explained. We understand your story. However, even if the divorce is due to infidelity, property division will occur. And don't expect all your demands to be met. If there's a disagreement between the two of you, it's my job to mediate. I will make a fair judgment based on the facts. Please understand that. If that's the case, then justice is on my side. Having an affair and giving birth to someone else's child is practically fraud. Should we call the police? Ashley, that's terrible. We were happy about having a grandchild and to find out it's not Noah's child. Doing this makes me sad. The most pitiful one is the child who was born, right? Please make amends and at least raise the child properly. 
They all spoke up. No matter if a lawyer gets involved, what you did can never be forgiven. I'm entirely innocent and a victim. It's crucial how much Ashley reflects and apologizes to me. How about it? Do you feel remorse and are you ready to apologize? Noah seemed entirely convinced of his victory. Now's the time. No. The one who needs to reflect and apologize is you, Noah. What did you say? Taken aback by my unexpected counterattack, Noah stood up suddenly. I continued calmly. Just give it up. I know everything. What are you saying? I know who your affair partner is. I'll demand alimony from him too. I decided it was time to present my trump card. Actually, I've invited someone here. Who is it? One of your accomplices. Noah shouted, fully ready for battle. I said in a teasing tone. You're not too bright, are you? I'm the victim here, so it's the witness. A witness? Thank you for waiting. Please, come in. As I spoke, two people entered through the door. Noah's mouth hung open in shock. You are. And you are. Yes, it's Victoria, the gynecologist, and my cousin Thomas. Hello. Victoria greeted. Nice to meet you. I mean, I'm Ashley's cousin, Thomas. Thomas introduced himself. This guy is Ashley's affair partner. Your cousins and you had a child together. Please don't say such rude things. I live nearby, and I was just consulting because my wife Alice is pregnant. I've always seen Ashley like a friend, never as a woman. Hey, that's a bit rude, isn't it, Thomas? I'll have to scold you later. I'd like to say my piece soon. Victoria interjected with a wry smile. Sorry, Victoria, please go ahead. I urged her to explain. Thank you. So, to put it simply, the baby is undoubtedly Noah's and Ashley's child, according to the DNA test results. What? 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 Noah exclaimed in shock. But, at that time, you said it wasn't my child. You bribed the lab technician to falsify the results. When my husband, who is the hospital's chairman, confronted the technician, he broke down crying and confessed everything. We even recorded that confession. I might confess too if confronted by her husband. Damn it. Noah bit his lip. Patricia thought the test results were suspicious and brought your hair to request another test. Normally, we don't do that, but I got convinced after talking to her, Ashley's sister, and the retest confirmed the baby is indeed both of yours. And the technician who colluded with you has been fired. It's a matter of our hospital's credibility. George was shocked by this. Noah, why would you do such a thing? George stood up and confronted Noah. That's, uh... Instead of Noah, Patricia answered for him. That's because Noah was the one having an affair? What? His parents gasped and were speechless. When we went shopping in the city, Patricia saw Noah walking with an unknown woman. It was Saturday, and when she checked with Ashley, she said Noah was supposed to be working that day. So it seemed suspicious, and she asked Thomas to look into it. Turn to, Thomas said proudly. Yeah, actually, I used to work part-time at a detective agency during my student days, so I'm good at investigations. He began bragging. And then, we found plenty of evidence of the affair, 
Here's a recording of that time. With that, Patricia played the voice recorder. It captured Noah and another woman's voices. We'll get her DNA test and fake it as someone else's child. That way, it'll serve as evidence of the affair. There's a suitable guy. He's supposedly a cousin, but we have photos and can frame it as an affair. If it works out, I can push all the blame onto Ashley and get a divorce. I'll get alimony, and since she had a child, I can claim the house and land too. I'm the tragic hero. There's no problem with you and me being together. How's that? I'm a genius, right? More like a villain than a genius, you know. You're like a bad guy from a drama, aren't you? Their laughter followed on the recording. Stopping the recorder, Thomas added. Your partner is a younger colleague from your own team at work. Noah's face turned pale. With such compelling evidence presented, there was no room for him to argue. Well, now that the facts are clear, it's my turn. The lawyer said with a smirk. Then, pulling various documents from an envelope, he began to explain. Here are Ashley's demands. She requests a divorce from Noah. She has stated that she will not pursue the matter of the DNA test falsification, so we will not address it here. We will seek alimony from Noah and the woman he was involved with. Additionally, we will them in property division and child support from Noah. His parents were utterly stunned by the unexpected turn of events. Noah, intensely questioned by Patricia and me, was utterly devastated. I filled out the divorce papers, signed my part, and had Noah write his portion. The completed divorce papers were promptly submitted by the lawyer. After leaving the office, we celebrated with drinks at a nearby bar, and thus, I divorced Noah. I received a substantial amount in alimony and a lump sum for child support. By the way, I named my son Adam. It seems his parents had advanced the money. Noah was completely cut off from his parents. He is said to be repaying the debt little by little. Noah's affair partner was a woman from his company. Their affair during work hours came to light, and both were dismissed for violating company policies. Abandoned by that woman, he struggled to find new employment and is now working part-time at a gas station. I live with my son, Adam. He's still young, so I've taken a leave of absence to focus on childcare. It looks like we'll manage with the alimony for a while. Adam is adorable, and as I took photos and videos, my cousin Thomas edited them and uploaded them to a video site. This unexpectedly became quite popular. Thanks to the site's popularity, I even started earning money from the videos. The earnings were substantial, so I decided to save for Adam's future. My parenting is supported by those around me. Patricia, of course, and the ladies from my part-time job also helped. Especially the ladies, who would shop at the supermarket on my behalf when I couldn't go out. And the manager would deliver them to my home. In fact, the manager, who was also divorced, was encouraged by the ladies to get closer to me. When Adam turned one, the manager proposed to me, Despite being a manager, he's down to earth, works hard, and treats everyone equally, which I really appreciated. Since he always delivered groceries to our home, it didn't take long for my fondness to turn into affection. I happily accepted his proposal. Adam had met him many times and was fond of him, and he seemed trustworthy because he cared about Adam. Although I accepted his proposal, 
We couldn't get married right away and went into a preparation period. Recently, Adam started calling him dad. It seems I've managed to recapture the happiness I once let go. This time, I'm determined to hold on to this happiness tightly. As I watch Adam's peaceful sleeping face, I made this resolve 